Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Sorry if the lighting is a little off. It's literally like one o'clock in the morning right now and I just got out of the shower. But I just wanted to film this video for you guys really quick because I just posted a video about my last day shift and me like quitting being a stripper. And a lot of you guys have been asking me why I quit and what I plan on doing next. So if you wanna know why and what's next for me, then keep watching. Okay, you guys, so I feel like there's not like one clear answer of why I retired from being a stripper. It kind of happened slowly. So I feel like lately I haven't even been working at the strip club at all. I would only go when I needed to vlog something for you guys. I wasn't actually working there and like that wasn't really my source of income. I would just go here and there when I wanted to make a vlog or like a video for you guys. But basically, as you guys know, I was working there. That was like my main source of income. I was vlogging it for you guys. And then as I started getting like more known on YouTube, I guess, people obviously started to recognize me. So when I very first started at the club, I was really to myself. Like I was just in my own little corner. I had my little bag and I was just, you know, in my corner, a little fly on the wall. And I would just go to work, get my money and leave. But then once I started getting noticed more on YouTube, obviously, people started to notice me in the clubs. And I guess it was fine when it was just like girls noticing me in the locker rooms and stuff like that. But I would get a little bit weird about that just because I'm like a really nervous person and I'm kind of shy and I get like social anxiety, I guess. Like I'm just not good around a lot of people, especially when I feel like they're looking at me or judging me. So I would get like a little nervous about that. But like at the end of the day, it was whatever. All the girls were super nice. Sometimes girls would come and actually see me at the club and like ask to like touch my implants and like see my butt and stuff like that, which was fine. But it was like one thing when it was girls recognizing me, but then once like the guys and like the customers started recognizing me, that's when it was like a little bit weird because at the strip club, you obviously have a stripper name. So my stripper name was Jessie. I don't know if I ever told you guys that, but that was my stripper name. So when I would meet a customer, I would be like, hi, I'm Jesse," And they would be like, oh no, you're Christina Villegas. And you know, you do this and this and this. So everyone like started to know my whole life. And obviously like I was posting everything and vlogging it and like taking pictures with my car. So these customers knew like my full legal name. They knew what car I was driving. They knew everything about my life because I was posting it on the internet. And although my club is super safe and you leave out of a different door than the customers and there's a different parking lot and you're walked to your car, there is always a chance that like someone can follow you and it's just like creepy and scary sometimes. So it started to no longer be like separate from my real life since now I was like Christina the stripper vlogger, they started like going hand in hand. So it was like I couldn't really escape it. So I didn't really like that like I was being recognized in the club because I feel like, like I said, I'm a really nervous person and I'm not the type of person to like talk to a guy in real life and just go up to them. But when I was at work and I was Jesse, it was like, I was a little less shy because I could take on that persona, but now they obviously knew who I really was. So it would definitely make me more nervous and a little more shy. And I've just felt like people were looking at me and judging me more, even if they weren't, I just like thought like that, I guess. So that was like the first reason that I kind of started going to the club less because I just felt like I was being noticed more and I didn't really know how to handle that. So after that, I really wanted to start doing traveling stripper vlogs. And I remember I told you guys all the time, like I'm gonna start traveling and I wanna do stripper vlogs. Like I was super excited about that. So that was like two years ago, not my last birthday, but the birthday before. Cause I remember I did do a traveling stripper vlog where I went to Texas, but like I had planned on going to like LA, California, that's the same place. But like I wanted to go to LA, I wanted to go to Vegas, I wanted to go to Miami. Like I wanted to like really get the whole like strip club experience and vlog it for you guys. So I remember on New Year's Eve, I did like, um, this was like two years ago. I did a New Year's Eve like all-star weekend vlog. And in that video, I was like, my New Year's resolution is to do my traveling stripper vlog. Like I was so excited about that. So that was January 1st and then on the 14th, of January which was my birthday I was in Vegas celebrating my birthday and shortly after my birthday I had my nose job scheduled so I told myself like after I get my nose done like I'm gonna do my traveling vlogs because I'm gonna feel so confident and like I'm gonna be ready to do it so as you guys know my first nose job came out really bad in my opinion I didn't like how it looked I was super insecure so after my nose 
I wasn't really working because I was too insecure to go into work. But eventually I had to go back to work because that's how I was making money. So I did end up going back to work after the nose job that I didn't like. And I felt like a lot of people were noticing it because obviously I vlogged my consultation before my nose job and I kept posting on my story that I got my nose done. So when I went back into work, everyone's like, oh my God, I wanna see your nose, like show us your nose. And even customers were like, oh, let me see how your nose came out. And I knew that I hated it. So the fact that like everyone was staring at it made me even more insecure. And it wasn't like a thing that I could kind of hide, like, oh, I got my nose done and I don't like it, but no one knows. I literally was doing vlogs and posting about it. So obviously everybody wanted to know about the nose. And I remember I had the girls in the back like contouring it and stuff. And I was just like so insecure about my nose. So I told myself that I was gonna wait for my nose to heal a little bit more before I went back. So I went back to like not going to the club again. And then COVID happened. So right before I was about to do my traveling stripper vlogs, COVID happened, so all the clubs were closing. They were closed for a very long time. They were literally closed for months. So it was almost a year. And then my nose was about to be one year post-op and I was going to get a reconstructive nose job. So once the clubs opened back up, it was already time for me to get my second nose job. So obviously I couldn't work again. So around the time that I got my nose job, which was like eight months ago, um, everyone was like, are you still stripping? Like, girl, you haven't worked. But I didn't work because one, my first nose job didn't come out how I wanted. Two, COVID happened. And then once the clubs opened back up again, I was getting my second nose job. So everyone just assumed like I quit stripping and I wasn't stripping anymore. So I remember when I had like my nose cast on from my second surgery, I did a video called like, am I still working at the club? And I was basically telling you guys, yes, I'm still working at the club. I'm just waiting for my nose to heal and then I'm gonna be back. And I still wanna do traveling vlogs for you guys. So once this nose healed, I did plan on going back to the club and vlogging for you guys and doing the traveling vlogs again. But then I feel like one thing after another, because while my nose was healing, I started doing my Tina V dance wear. And then I started looking into buying a house and buying a building. And then once I bought the building, I started renovating the building. So then it turned into, I was literally only going to work at the club when I needed to make a video about it. I wasn't actually working at the club anymore, like in real life for my income. I was just working to vlog it. So I felt like it wasn't as authentic anymore. I didn't, I kind of outgrew the club. Obviously I was making money from social media, YouTube, Instagram, my dancewear, my sponsorships. So my income was coming from there not the club anymore and I was really just doing the videos to make vlogs for you guys and I was scared like if I stopped doing stripper vlogs is everyone gonna stop following me but honestly I feel like the whole point of the club at least for me has always been to get in make my money and get out and I feel like that's what I did I have retired from stripping earlier than I would have if it wasn't for you guys if it wasn't for me doing YouTube and getting as lucky as I got with all of you guys supporting me I would definitely still be working at the strip club and saving my money and still trying to get out of the club make a career or a business or whatever so I feel like I just got lucky that you know I blew up on YouTube and that you guys have been supporting me and I was able to stop stripping earlier than expected but I still do want to make stripper content so I am bringing another girl to like apply at the strip club because the other video that I did bringing the subscribers, I really enjoyed doing that. I really like meeting like other girls and like helping them out because I feel like I kind of needed that when I first started and obviously I didn't have that. So I am going to be bringing another girl to audition later this week and I'm going to be vlogging that for you guys. I'm also going to be doing a Q&A with another girl who works at a booty club. If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw it on my story. I also do want to do more story times of like things that I've experienced while being a stripper because I recently just had like a very crazy experience of something that's like the dark side of stripping that I've never seen before and I did want to share that with you guys as well and I also want to like interview other girls from the industry and although I'm not going to be doing traveling stripper vlogs where I actually work at the club I still want to do like a traveling stripper vlog where I go and see how other clubs are I also noticed that when I do stripper vlogs I can't really record a lot of content for you guys because I'm not able to like film me actually working but when I go visit the club I feel like I'm able to get a lot more content when I'm not actually working because I remember I did that one vlog where I like spent ten thousand dollars at the strip club and I did champagne rooms with the girls and I like met a bunch of different girls and I loved doing that video 
So I feel like I want to go to like different places and see like clubs that are completely different than mine and just kind of like meet with the girls and interview other girls from the industry that have different experiences. And I want to continue to bring girls to my club so they can audition and see how they like it and how they can help you guys on what their experiences are. I know there are also a lot of dark sides of stripping that I maybe haven't really talked about a lot in my channel. I feel like I do press a lot about safety and never doing things that you're uncomfortable with. But for the majority of the time, I've really only worked at one club and it is a very like censored safe club and I know all clubs are not like that and I did recently experience that that's why I want to share that with you guys and also just talk about a lot of other things in the stripping industry besides just like okay I do this in the morning and then I went to work and this is how much money I made I want to touch on other parts of the strip club like how I interviewed the house mom I know that some bouncers and security guards they have their views on strippers and stories that they've experienced so I just want to touch on like a lot of different other parts of stripping so I am still going to be doing other stripping content but basically to generally answer your question I quit stripping because I feel like I outgrew it stripping did what it had to do for me and I got in there I made my money luckily you know, I met all of you guys and you helped me make it out sooner, but I was able to invest in property and start my own dancewear business and make money off doing YouTube, something I love. So that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. That's the next step for me is to just keep making videos, still make stripper content. I'm just not actually going to be working, um, you know, renovate my building. I want to share that with you guys also, my building and my business and just everything else that's going on in my life and also hopefully one day partner up with a club and maybe own a club or be like co-owner in a club and invest in a club because i love how safe gold room is and i know what i like as a stripper so i would love to one day you know maybe soon work with a strip club and maybe do that who knows but yeah um that's the goal i feel like if you're a stripper you want to get in there make that money start your own business have a career or do something outside of stripping because stripping is a really good thing i know a lot of people think it's a bad thing it can be bad but if you do the right things while stripping it can be a really good stepping stone to get you to the next level in your life so stay tuned i do have a lot of more stripper content coming up soon and I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing. But I hope that kind of answered your guys' questions. Um, I will be posting a lot of videos more frequently. So I hope you guys liked this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.